Chapter 7, being a detailed look at four possible solutions and why they alone won't work. From the continued preservation of the individuals best fitted for the two sites, two varieties might slowly be formed. These varieties would cross and blend where they met. Charles Darwin on the Origin of Species Farming fish is sometimes thought of as a solution, just as domestic animals are farmed to provide most of the world's meat without depleting the wild mammal population. Might not something similar be done with fish? If certain fish populations could be raised like cattle, wouldn't that save the wild species? The idea of fish farming, which is taking fish from the wild and keeping them in ponds so that they reproduce and provide a constant source of fish, is not new. The Chinese did this with carp, a freshwater fish, 4,500 years ago, feeding them the leftovers from the worm cultivation of the silk industry. There is also evidence of such fish ponds with the ancient Hebrews and ancient Egyptians. The Romans learned to cultivate both fish and oysters. In some ways, the idea of fish farming seems like a good one, but upon closer examination, supplying people with farmed fish doesn't actually save wild fish at sea. Most farmed fish are fed wild fish that are caught by net draggers the size of factories. These ships indiscriminately scoop up fish by the thousands and grind them up into fish meal, which is then pressed into fish pellets to feed to the fish back on the farm. In the case of salmon, it has been estimated that four pounds of wild fish are fed to grow one pound of farmed fish. There is also the old problem of Darwin and evolution. Animals adapt to their environment and change. We've already seen this in the farming and domestication of mammals. A dog only vaguely resembles a wolf. Top of page 90. A cow barely resembles an auroch, the swift-footed, ferocious animal from which it descended. Aurochs were hunted into extinction about 400 years ago. The fact that farm fish are consider considerably different from their wild ancestors is immediately apparent. Because they live in overcrowded pens and swim much less than their wild cousins, the muscle tissue of farmed fish have different consistency. Some species don't even look like their wild ancestors anymore. A farmed striped bass resembles a wild one only in the black and silver stripes for which it was named. The farmed striped bass are much smaller and have an entirely different shape to their pointy heads and short bodies. But a greater problem in farm fishing is that farmed fish lose their survival skills. A fish pen does not have the survival struggle of the wild. There are no predators there, and fish are largely protected from storms and temperature changes. But back into the wild, a farm fish would probably not even know how to survive. Top of page 91. If a farmed fish mated with a wild fish, their offspring might also lack these survival skills. A salmon might not know to return up the river of its birth for spawning. A cod might lack the enzyme that it needs to release to keep from freezing in subarctic water. Even just a few farm fish accidentally released into the wild could menace the survival of an entire wild population. Furthermore, overcrowded pens produce such enormous quantities of waste, fish poop, including chemicals that are also sometimes used, that they pollute surrounding waters. While the fish farming industry is well aware of these problems and is trying to address them with such ideas as vegetable alternatives to feed, such measures will take the farm species even further away from the wild species and make them even more dangerous for the evolution of the species. It should also be remembered that while the problem is preserving fish, fish farming does nothing to preserve fisheries. So if fish farming isn't a good solution, what about limiting the fish that fishermen are allowed to catch? It seems obvious that if the problem is fishermen are catching too many fish, the solution should be to tell them to catch less. That has been done, but it is not a simple solution. Page 92. Fishermen cannot be told to simply catch fewer fish. A system of rules has to be established that can be enforced with penalties. For those found catching more than they are allowed, the number must be established for each species in each fishing area, and it has to change regularly because fish populations change. What is the total population in the area for each species? Since the fish cannot be seen and they move around, they're difficult to count. Scientists test small parts of the ocean by fishing with nets and then use a computer to estimate the total population based on that catch. But they make mistakes. Sometimes they allow too many fish to be caught, 
because they thought the population was bigger than it actually was. Iceland, after successfully estimating their cod population for decades, overcalculated for a few years and allowed fishermen to take too many cod from their fishing grounds. This led to a major crisis in the Icelandic fishery, which has been considered one of the best managed fisheries in the world. Page 93. The estimates have to be taken constantly and must take into account shifts in the weather, changes in the population of the fish, mammals and birds that feed on the fish, and even the changes in their food supply. The second problem with regulating in this way, which is known as fishing quotas, is that most fish that are caught are dead by the time they reach the fisherman's deck. If the fisherman has caught more fish than is allowed, he must take some of the dead fish and throw them overboard. Fishermen hate wasting fish like this, and yet millions of pounds of fish are thrown overboard every year because of these laws. Page 94. These laws also give fishermen an incentive to waste fish. A fisherman hauls in the nets, calls into the markets on his cell phone to find out what fish are selling for for the highest price that day, and then dumps the fish that selling for the lowest prices. Why would he use up his quota on a species on a day when the price is low? Another problem is that the quota system tends to direct fishermen to constantly target new species. This happened in New England when the cod quota was small, fishermen went after haddock, which are in the same biological family as cod. Darwin noted that competition is particularly intense between related species because they tend to eat similar things. Because fishermen interfered with these struggles by killing large numbers of cod, the haddock population flourished. Great cod ports, such as Gloucester, have become haddock ports now. But if the fishermen also kill too many of the haddock before the cod have recovered, a wide swath out of the food chain will have been irreparably damaged, shifting the entire balance out of nature. There's also the issue of bycatch. <clears throat> Page 95. Dragging nets is not a perfect science, and although fishermen adjust the depth of the net and other factors to pursue a particular species, there are always a few other species that turn up in the net. This is the bycatch. The number of species of bycatch commonly hauled in vary depending on the diversity of the fishing grounds. In some places, a well-targeted drag may bring in only one or two other types of fish. Off of Cornwall, where a number of ocean systems meet on the southwestern tip of England, it is common to haul in 20 different species. Shrimp Trawler Bycatch Scientists estimate that for every pound of shrimp caught, there may be up to 12 times that in wasteful bycatch. Page 96. Bycatch is a dilemma for regulators because fishermen can't avoid it and it would be extremely wasteful to throw out all the accidentally caught fish. In New England, the approach has generally been to permit bycatch. A fisherman targeting flounders permitted to land whatever cod turn up in the net. When the bycatch starts getting larger than the target species though, questions have to be asked about which is really the target. In 2007, the U.S. started putting a quota on the amount of bycatch allowed. In 2007, the British government, after what they said was a five-year investigation, charged 17 fishermen and ship owners from the port of Newland in Cornwall with illegally landing fish that were over quota. Unwilling to throw away valuable fish that were already dead but were over quota, six Newland vessels had been landing more than their quota of cod, hake, and monkfish by mislabeling them as ling, turbot, and bass, fish for which there were no quotas. The fact that it took five years to catch them may indicate how little regulators know about fish. The Cornish fishermen did not deny their crime, but argued that while barely eking out a living, they could not bring themselves to throw out valuable fish that were already dead anyway. One of the accused, Steve Hicks, a former policeman, told the London Guardian, quote, we knew we were doing wrong, but it wasn't done with greed. It was done to make a living, end quote. A British government spokesman called the case a, quote, major success in the control of overfishing, end quote, which is probably true from an administrative point of view. For a biological one, though, this seems less certain. Drew Davies, another one of the fishing boat captains, said that during one trip, he had been forced to dump a thousand dead cod overboard. Quote, there's nothing worse for a fisherman than doing that, he said.